Last week when um, we were doing our daily scripture reading, one of the verses in particular stood out to me, and I thought I would share it with you today because and share some of my thoughts on it. And it's in Philippians 3, verse, starting in verse 12. It says, Not that I've already obtained this, or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead, I press on to the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of those of us who are mature think this way, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Um, I really like that because, you know, when I was young, a young believer, I thought, well, as soon as I, I can't wait to be older in the faith, and, and when I get to that point, I'm sure I'll be so much more mature than I am. And yes, I am more mature, but I have not arrived. And I still have growth and I still have areas in my life that need growth and so what I really like about this is that Paul's talking about running the race and he's talking about his own particular spiritual growth and but it's giving us some principles that we can learn from and we read in other places in Scripture about running the race so this is a, you know a thought that is brought forward more than once so when we think about running the race, first the first thing we need to do to grow as a Christian is to be in the race. In, in the beginning here, it talks about that God called us. And if he calls us, then we need to be in the race. It doesn't mean that we have to be, you know, it doesn't look right if we're just good or if we're sincere or if we go to church or we have a great family. That's not being in the race. That's part of the race, but it's not being in the race. Being in the race is being called by God and living your life devoted and following Christ. And that's what it means to be in the race. And, and we're called to be in the race, completely in the race, not just being good, being a good person. And the second thing we see here is to grow as a Christian, we have to have a proper attitude. And that's hard. Sometimes it's hard to have a proper attitude. In verse 4, 15, we're told to think a certain way. And in Philippians, 10 times it says that we are to have this attitude. And so it's talking about having an attitude that is pleasing to Christ. And we are to have that kind of attitude. And um, because Philippians is a book that is really about joy, then we have to um, put the correlation together that our attitude should have joy in it, that the way we act should have joy in it, and that will define how we act. If we have an attitude of joy, we will act with joy, and we will actually be different than people in the world, especially today with COVID and, and so much complaining, and so many people who are so tired of it, including me, I'm tired of it, but if my attitude is grumpiness and complaining, then I'm no different than anybody else. But if my attitude is joy and trusting Christ, then I am different. I appear different and people see me differently. The third thing to grow in Christ, we need to recognize that we haven't arrived in our maturity. Like I said, you know, I've been a Christian for 45 years. I have not arrived. When Paul wrote this, he'd been a Christian at least 25 years, and he's saying he hasn't arrived yet. In fact, he says two things. Not that I have already obtained it, maturity, or I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, maturity. Instead, twice he tells us, I press on. He is continuing on to grow in his faith, and that's what we are called to do as well. Continue on to grow. We know that runners, to win a race, they have to train, they have to stay in shape, they have to go outside and run. If they don't continually run, they lose it. And they have to not use all their energy at the beginning of the race. They have to save some of that energy. In fact, they use the most of their energy at the end of the race, which is an encouragement to those of us who are older. Because it doesn't mean we give up and we quit running the race. It means now we should use the majority of our energy to finish the race. 
And that is kind of exciting because it doesn't cut anybody out of the race. It, it allows anybody from any generation to be in this race together and running together. Um, there are no quick, easy fixes or easy answers in life. It is a slow process and we grow slowly. And if we stay in that slow process, we learn how to be gracious and patient with others and with ourselves. And it's important for us to remember that the race isn't run all at the beginning. It's not run really hard in the middle. It's run gradually throughout our life and that we end it when we meet Jesus. So to sum this up, we must forget the past. Now, when I say forget the past, it's not wrong to self-examine yourself. But when I say forget the past, I'm saying don't hold on to the past. The past will drag you down. The past will leave you always struggling. So let go of the past. And when I say the past, we often go right to our childhood. But the past is any time before today. It could be last week. It could be last month. It's any time before today we need to forget the past. There's problems, mistakes we make, and we need to let go of it and forget it and move forward. The next thing is to reach forward to the future. As we do the, as we make our words and actions pleasing to Jesus, let's reach forward for the future. And finally, we need to press on in the present, which means we need to stay teachable. Now to stay teachable means that we stay humble because humble people don't think they know all the answers. And to stay teachable means we remain submissive because Submissive people can learn from anybody. So we need to stay in that place of staying teachable. So I want to give you one question for you to ponder this week and ask yourself. Do I devote myself to knowing Christ and being like him in the same way that an athlete devotes himself to winning the race?